qu'il faut que les gens comprennent, c'est que la grossophobie fait grossir et elle peut même tuer. C'était compliqué de se représenter avec les femmes qu'on voyait à la télé, dans les magazines. De pouvoir donner la parole à ces invisibles de la société qui bien souvent se cachent. Welcome to a new edition. I'm Nadia Shalby, and this week we're taking a look at France's attitude to weight, and more specifically, the curvier end of the scales. Now, while the French cliche of an effortlessly trim population obviously doesn't hold true, the country does seem to harbour a deep-rooted disdain for overweight people, especially here in the capital, to the extent that since 2017, Paris City Hall has decided to tackle the issue of an annual anti-sizeism day, a chance to call out social prejudice but also put the focus on discrimination in the workplace and, more surprisingly, in the medical field, where stereotypes die hard and can have very serious consequences. Marjorie is 39 years old. She's been battling her weight since she was a child and has had to put up with bullying from a young age. They used to call me the beach ball, the barrel. You feel like you have the plague. It's a bit like that. Marjorie has encountered the same prejudices from the medical profession. When she was a teenager, her first visit to a gynecologist was particularly unpleasant. She looked me up and down and said, maybe you should stop making a pig of yourself. I think if she had slapped me in the face, it would have hurt less. For the rest of the consultation, she didn't say much, but I could tell from the way she looked at me and when she touched my stomach for the exam, I could tell she was disgusted. Such humiliating treatment can be commonplace for obese people. Judged for their size, they're often reminded of their weight by their doctors, even if the original motive for the consultation was something else entirely. But Marjorie's nutritionist argues it's a doctor's job to warn their patient that being overweight is dangerous for their health. It may seem intrusive for some patients, but for their medical well-being, it's essential. There's also a secondary problem. There are certain medical examinations that are more complicated to perform on obese people. Sometimes patients can be misdiagnosed, as the test results aren't accurate because the person is obese, and that, for a doctor, is very unsatisfactory. This hospital in Rouen has developed a training program to teach doctors how to treat overweight people. Part of the process involves putting on a 17 kilogram fat suit. Putting on the obesity suit allows them to get into the skin of the patient, to understand the difficulties they face just performing daily tasks. In terms of mobility, but also in their lives, the looks they get from other people, the difficulty they have doing things that we can do without a second thought. Climbing stairs, undergoing a scan, or just walking down a street. These simple tasks can be daily tests for obese people. For a personal take on this issue, I'm joined by author Gabrielle Dédier, whose first-hand experience of fat phobia has now been turned into a TV film. Ceux qui me harcèlent tous les jours ont raison. J'ai un corps que personne ne supporte et faut, faut que j'en change et que je regarde la réalité en face. On va se battre. On va arrêter de se laisser faire. On est comme on est, d'accord On déborde. C'est comme ça. Merde. J'en ai marre. Gabrielle Dédier, hello. Thank you for being with us. Bonjour. Hello. Uh, the word grossophobie or fat phobia entered French dictionaries in 2018. Could you define it for us first? Fat phobia is a form of discrimination linked to weight and obesity, and it's multi layered. It manifests as discrimination in the workplace, starting with recruitment, discrimination in the medical field, and then, of course, everyday discrimination. So, what's been your personal experience of fat phobia? 
Unfortunately, I can say I've ticked all the fat phobia boxes. I've experienced discrimination in the workplace where, for instance, I applied for a job as a PR manager and was told we're not giving you the job because your IQ is inversely proportional to your BMI or body mass index. That's the type of abuse I've been confronted with. In one of my previous jobs, I was also harassed and told, I don't want to work with a fat person, or when talking about retirement, colleagues would say, Gabrielle's lucky, she'll never face the difficulties of retirement because she'll die in her fat long before then. That's how fat phobia translates in the workplace. Then, in the medical field, I've come across callous doctors like a dentist who told me that the reason I had cavities was because I was brushing my teeth with caramel. Or I've been refused exams such as ultrasounds on the basis that, quote, your fat will make it impossible to see what's in your stomach and it will be a waste of the taxpayers' money. That kind of thing. And finally, everyday fat phobia is not being able to fit on chairs at a cafe terrace, struggling to get through tight underground exits, not being able to sit in a cinema, that sort of thing. Now, in reality, um, just 5% of French women wear a size 8, 13% a size 10, well, at least 40% of the country's women wear a size 14, um, and yet we feel like the French population has this idea of being magically thin, as the reputation we have abroad, and there's this sense of fat phobia. How do you explain that? That notion isn't so much about French women, it's more a generalisation of some mythical Parisian woman who seems to live off cigarettes and wine and never eats any solid food. Because while around 17% of the French population is classified as obese, there are clear geographic disparities. In the capital, for instance, you have the lowest number of fat people, it's around 10% in Paris. Whereas in the most impoverished areas of the country, like the north or parts of the south, 26% of the population is classified as obese. That's right, because you mentioned the poorer regions of France there, and that's because there's a socio-economic aspect to obesity and therefore fat phobia. Obesity is undoubtedly a social marker. You just have to look at the figures provided by the International Labour Organization. According to those statistics, here in France, 30% of welfare beneficiaries are obese. But that figure goes down to just 7% among those who earn 4,000 euros a month or more. So yes, the maps charting poverty, alcoholism, depression and obesity across France all look the same. And is there also a gender aspect to this? Obesity rates are pretty much the same for men and for women, but the social stigma is very different. That's why women go under the knife a lot more than men. And there's a similar disparity in the workplace. Statistics show that during the recruitment process, overweight women are eight times more likely to be discriminated against than their slender counterparts. By comparison, men are three times more likely to face discrimination. And what are the effects of fat phobia on people who are overweight? What you need to understand is that fat phobia feeds obesity and it can even kill because people commit suicide as a result of the abuse and emotional distress. And when people have a tendency to eat their feelings, all that discrimination just ends up inducing more weight gain. One of the ways of breaking that vicious cycle is to raise awareness, which is exactly what Axel Perez is doing with his latest exhibition. The photographer spent three months in a specialised clinic capturing the harsh reality of obesity and its treatment, but also offering patients the opportunity to shine in a series of stunning artistic portraits. A chance for his subjects and the public at large to come to grips with a simple truth. Often people who are obese or simply overweight have serious issues with their body image. And I wanted to show them that being fat doesn't mean they can't be beautiful. And Perez's initial concerns over how visitors might react to the pictures were quickly assuaged. The feedback I get from visitors is that it has really changed their perception. Many told me that when they first entered the gallery, they were apprehensive, thinking the pictures might be somewhat voyeuristic, or that they'd be confronted with bodies that would make them uncomfortable or even spark disgust. But then their perception evolved. Suddenly they found themselves able to see beauty where they couldn't before. While the body positive movement begins to take hold, France's famed fashion industry is having to reassess its approach to physical norms. 
while the number of high-end retailers continues to restrict sizes to ensure its clothing is only worn by a certain body type, high street brands seem increasingly keen to offer a plus-size version of their collections and use a wider variety of models in their campaigns. Take a look. In the French countryside, a photo shoot's underway that's changing another landscape, that of modelling. This is a new collective grown from the body positive movement in the United States, using plus size models to break through preconceptions about the female body and its image. There's every body type, every shape, skin color and culture to talk about positive body image, to accept oneself and all women, whether small, tall, slim or large. You can see it, we're gorgeous, we're curvy, we're all kinds of shapes, we're stunners. <laughs> Several brands have recently moved to align themselves closer to the reality of average body types and appeal to larger women through their advertising. This lingerie retailer is one example, with larger sizes accounting for a third of their sales. Women always come in knowing what will suit them, knowing that they're a D, E or F cup, while before they would say, oh, I didn't know you did anything other than smaller sizes. When it comes to French women, for instance, they're far from the average you often see in glossy magazines. Around 63 kilos in weight for 1 meter 65 in height and a bust of 93 centimeters, compared to an average top model of 57 kilos, 1 meter 80 tall and 86 centimeters around the chest. Even modeling agencies are getting with the times. This Paris firm has seen far more diversity take root over the last six months. We have maybe one or two castings a week where we look for more curvy women. People must have noticed that women want to be represented in their entirety. There aren't just prepubescent women, there are also actual women. The collective hopes to inspire other fashion initiatives to burst forth, breaking down even more barriers, with public events like this one at the end of April in Paris. As amused tourists looked on, around 20 models of all sizes strutted out near the Eiffel Tower to promote body diversity. Well, with that, we leave this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to France 24.